Hey, hey, uh, hey, okay, as promised, we will now investigate the directory structure of a Blitz project. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or queries or concerns, or if something is unclear, let me know in the comments and then we can try and figure it out together. We're learning, we're um, doing this thing together, so feel free to join in um, in the discussion and um, pose your questions. If I make a mistake, feel free to correct me. Like I say, we're all here just learning together. This is a new framework, but it's got very cool features. So let's dive in. Once you've created your Blitz project, as we have done in the previous video, we ran Blitz new and created Blitz tut, right? And it did create some boilerplate code for us. We then seeded into our directory and we ran Blitz dev. So you'll see a bunch of things going on here. This is just for debugging purposes. It's showing us on which page we are and whether it has compiled successfully, etc. If you've worked with JavaScript applications before, this shouldn't look too strange. We're going to ignore the .husky and the .next and .vs code folders. This has got nothing to do with the actual project code, right? The first folder and one of the most important folders we're going to look at is the app folder. The app folder contains pretty much the meat and potatoes of your application. Let's dive a little bit deeper. The first directory you see here is the API directory. In the API directory, you will create API endpoints that will send a request to the server and send back a response from the server. Now how this works is you'll create a file within the API directory, let's call it get logged in users.tsx. You create your request uh, within this file and then magically this API endpoint in quotes will be available under localhost forward slash API forward slash get logged in users. So if you told Blitz that you want a JSON response, you will see that in this URL, which is pretty cool. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at. So remember I told you that Blitz does a lot of boilerplate for you and that it has loose opinions. When you install Blitz, you can actually decide if you want some of the boilerplate slash out of the box features included when you create a new project. In this project, I did select to include accounts, uh, authorization and creation within the boilerplate. You can choose not to have that in. You can choose to change some of these folders as well. That's where the loose opinions comes in. Um, let, let's explain a little bit further. Because we have the auth feature in the system, Blitz has created this folder. So you can look at this auth folder as a domain where all the authorization stuff happens. So this is one of the features of the application, if you, if you want to think about it like that. And everything that goes with that feature, we put into this auth folder. You don't have to do it like this. You can make your own folder and name that folder features. And within that folder, you can put auth. Here's another example, users. So for users, um, we created a query and we have get current user within that query. So this, this folder would contain everything that's got to do with queries or mutations, changes we want to make to users in the database. Queries, everything we want to pull from the database just an overview of the auth folder because there's quite a lot going on here. So this is neatly separated. We have components that relate to authorization that look a little bit like this, React TypeScript stuff. Then we have mutations. How do we interact with the database when it 
comes to auth, when someone forgets a password and they reset it, we obviously need to store that in the database. So mutations, this is where all of those things will happen. Okay, pages. It's very self-explanatory. There's a forgot password page, a login page. So within the login page, we will obviously use the login form component that we get here. All right. Okay, let's move on to the validations file. This is where we will validate our input fields and we're using, well, let's set, it, set this up for us by using ZOD. So ZOD is a very cool validation package that makes it super easy for you to decide how you want to validate an input. This is another discussion, but I'm just pointing this out. This also falls within the off. Right, so now we move on to the core folder. So you can think of the core folder pretty much as the auth folder, except this is kind of the foundation of your application. So all your reusable stuff, you're going to put into the core folder. If there is a header component with a logo in it, it might be a good idea to put it in the core folder. If you've got static pages, maybe it's a good idea to put some of their components within the core folder. We've got a form component, which we can use everywhere and we have a labeled text field. So that's very generic, right? We can pull that in anywhere and then use it accordingly. Yeah, so, okay. The next folder we're looking at is the hooks folder. This is not a folder where you put web hooks. This is the folder where you put React hooks. There is a big difference. Here is an example of a React hook that you will be using within a React function because we have boilerplate code with authorization this hook was created this is where your react hooks will go another clue that this is react hooks is the use prefix on the file name cool let's move on layouts remember we're still in the core folder so if you have layouts that are bound to stay the same across many sections of your app then this is where you're going to put it. Here's a good example. In this case, the header information will be in the form of the title and the favicon will be the same for each and every page. So we can reuse this. Okay, got it. Let's move on. So pages is very self-explanatory. This is where you will put all your pages. Well, Blitz makes use of file-based routing. So this means that if I create a file and I name that file 404 and I put some stuff in that file, then that route would be created for us automatically. So let me quickly demonstrate that. So we call our file 404. Let's navigate to 404. And it does in fact give us the 404 page. Pretty, pretty neat. Okay, moving on. DB. The DB folder contains everything surrounding the database. Your database configuration, your database schema with your models. We're going to get into this. Um, it's, it's such a joy to work with, really. You'll see. It's, it's, it's going to be so easy and it's going to be, it's just going to be lovely. It's going to be lovely. Uh, migrations for when you um, add models to your database and you want to make it part of the built-in SQL light that comes with the app. So you've got a SQL client ready to go, but you can use anything. You can use, hell, you can use Mongo, you can use GraphQL, doesn't really matter. You're allowed to choose. Okay, integrations is a file that is not mentioned explicitly in the directory structure overview in the documentation. But let's assume for now that any third party integrations, uh, anything to do with that will come and sit here. I'm thinking Stripe integration, maybe you're sending stuff to a CRM, any third party stuff you're going to do you're gonna put it into this folder. So it's nice and neat, and everyone knows where what is. The mailers folder, right? So this is a email template, 
we can put templates into the mailers folder and just to confirm here you need to add a mailer integration in integrations right so i'm thinking sendgrid would probably or twilio whatever it might be that's going to fall into the integrations because you're using a third party system cool node modules that's just got nothing to do with blitz it's just all our node packages then we get to our public folder so this is all the files that are publicly available to the client that's why they call it public anything you put in here can be accessed by anyone going to your url and sniffing around in your images folder for instance so this is stuff that can be accessed and downloaded by the client without any authorization whatsoever this is a good place to put stuff like your logo, Favicon, maybe some assets, banner images, whatever it might be. This is going to go into your public folder. And the rest of the files you see here are pretty much just config stuff. There's environment variables, TypeScript configuration, all those things come into the, this uh, root folder. This is what you get to start with when you install Blitz with boilerplate code. So I hope you learned something and please comment if you're stuck, if you don't understand something, if you want us to go deeper into a specific folder for instance, let me know. In the next video we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into how pages work, dynamic routing, how do we automatically change our URL based on content in the database, etc. So we're taking this step by step. I hope this was useful. Please, please like, if, uh, please like this video if you found this stuff useful and please subscribe. Um, help us, help us get to the first thousand subscribers. Cheers.